Hello, Mama. This is episode five of Reaching Abundance. And today I'm sharing with you some of my thoughts and the inner work I've been doing around parenting. Yep, this one is more of a motherhood episode. And as I share with you what I'm learning about conscious parenting and why it's so interesting to me, I think you'll be able to see the connection between financial behavior and the reactions we sometimes have as parents. The root of these reactions and behaviors are the same, and the action we can take to resolve issues in these areas is the same. It's not complicated either, which is why I'm super duper happy to be creating this episode right now. I think it can really help us mamas. Abundance is possible for all of us, no matter where we are or in what stage of life. Welcome to the Reaching Abundance podcast, where your host, Virginia Elder, shares helpful guidance for moms around positive mindset, creating simplicity, practicing true self-care, and most of all, money management. Her financial journey toward a better life blossomed into an insatiable desire for overall happiness and abundance. Hang out with her right here each week while she ditches the taboos around women and money, shares resources, educates, and financially empowers all the mamas. All right. Thank you for being here with me today. I'm Virginia, and I'm so ready to share what I've been up to this week. First of all, I have to announce that my last group program of the 2019 year is open for enrollment right now. It's an eight-week online group coaching program for mamas who are just basically too dang busy to deal with the numbers. If you're a working mom with a full social media calendar and paying bills is the last thing you want to think about, you're my kind of gal. You'd rather be out having fun with the kids going on a date night with your hubby, or maybe sleeping, which is why the family finances are always on the back burner. You don't have time to look at the big picture and spend hours budgeting, so you just pay things that need to be paid as fast as you can to get them done so you can go enjoy the things you actually want in life. Am I right? (laughs) The Empowered Budgeting Mamas is the solution you've been waiting for. Registration is open right now at happyhealthyabundance.net slash budgetmoms2019. So that's slash budgetmoms2019. And you get hundreds of dollars in freebies just for signing up before October 10th. This program is all about the budget everything you need to know about budgeting. By the end of the program, which is the 1st of December, you'll have a budget that works for your family. Plus, probably for the first time ever, you're going to fund the holidays with cash. Imagine, finally, you can end the year feeling on top of things, confident, cash flowing like a queen, and paying for Christmas. This eight-week group program with me is only $197. Like I said, the freebies are alone just worth that. Register by October 10th at happyhealthyabundance.net slash budgetmoms2019. I know you're going to love it, and I can't wait to work together. Okay, so... In order for me to share what I've been researching and learning this week, I have to start by sharing that so many of the decisions I've made in the past 10 years have been with the intention of providing my kids with opportunities, experiences, and possibilities in their lives. We are all aware of privilege, any type of privilege, and what having it can provide. Sometimes the effects of lack of privilege are more obvious. Those lines of opportunity and experience have been so clear to me for so long. And when things come up that absolutely ignite my soul, 
it usually has something to do with people being able to have access to something they deserve, maybe opportunity for education or the ability to achieve something that they weren't able to before. I get fired up when I hear about impoverished communities being altered by sudden access to education, when I hear about young girls from India being suddenly allowed to attend school, or when I hear about programs that help third world country residents learn about entrepreneurship and help them start their businesses. Those are things that are exciting to me, and I feel my heart pound with joy for those people and the change that their families will experience. But at the same time, some of that stuff feels so far away and external to me. I know I can donate. We do. But it's important for me, for us, to realize we can't fix everything, but we can fix some things. I have to remind myself of this at times and reel my emotions back in. For my own sanity and emotional health, I have to focus on the things and people that I am connected to, like my kids. I am their mother, possibly their greatest influencer, and I can harness my power and change their lives for the better. In doing so, some of my actions are likely to affect others, and in my own small way, I am making the world a better place. It's important for me to remember that. Knowing that we wanted to provide the best we could for our kids, we found a home in an area with highly rated schools. We interviewed mothers who ran in-home daycares. We toured Montessori schools, and we made plans to provide the best for our children. We all do that, right? We get the best, safest crib. We do all the research about how they should sleep. We read all the reviews about every video baby monitor possible on Amazon, and we'll even go so far as to alter our daily habits in the pursuit of providing health and life for our children. But it doesn't stop there. As they are infants and toddlers, we obsess about sleep strategies, when to introduce baby food, when they should crawl or walk. And then when they do start to walk, we go nuts trying to basically save them from killing themselves on hard floors, corners of coffee tables, and dangerous stair steps. Even further along, you start to run into potential discipline issues, fits, throwing toys, hitting, and the dreaded talking back. All along, I've been trying to teach encourage, and even discipline with love and with an awareness that the things they feel and the impact I make in these young years are things they are going to carry with them for the rest of their life. No pressure or anything, right? We have enough external pressure out there with work, friends, social events, relationships, and everything else. I mean, how could I possibly also try to be so cognizant of how I raise my children. Sometimes the awareness that everything I say and do, the way I act, and even my feelings are going to be reflected in my children, whether I like it or not, is kind of freaky and maybe even overwhelming. It's hard to face any issue with hitting, talking back, or something we've had to face recently, stealing, with acute awareness that Not only do you want to correct the behavior, but you want to do it in a way that leaves the kiddo with understanding instead of fear, thankfulness instead of greed, and love instead of hurt. It's really tough not to fly off the handle and yell at them sometimes, right? You know what, though? We aren't perfect. I can't say I've never popped their hands. I can't say I never felt like steam was going to blow out my ears. And I definitely cannot say that I've never yelled because I have. We all make mistakes, get emotional, and we all act in the moment. I think that's important to recognize because I also don't want my kids to somehow learn that you should hold your emotions back and that you should have such tempered reactions. I think it's healthy to express your crazy sometimes. That is exactly why we dance, jump up and down, or squeal with excitement. And 
the opposite of those reactions should be just as acceptable. It's okay to cry. It's okay to be sad or to feel hurt. I do my best to talk about this full spectrum with my kids. They are five and seven years old now, so they're starting to really be able to understand these conversations. Now, I've been talking to them, nudging them toward comprehension of these emotions and actions for years, but it's starting to take, and I am so happy to be able to say that. Hey, Mama. This episode is brought to you by Your Uncluttered Home, an amazing online program built specifically for mothers with young kids who need realistic guidance toward less clutter, more peace, and more space for what matters in this mom life. This online course is taught by Ali Casaza and has helped thousands of women physically clear clutter and create more time to be present for their kids' childhood instead of cleaning up after it. To check out her online course, click the link in the show notes. In just three simple steps, you'll begin to have a home that is serving you and your family instead of stealing your time and effort away from them, which is why I can't wait for you to try it. Our work as parents is never done, though. You've heard that, right? So, out of all my effort discussions about emotions, and attempts to discipline with an elevated level of intention, everything I've been doing is in an effort to provide them with the tools I think will benefit them in the future and therefore allow them to have an altered trajectory. When I look at my family history, I see broken homes, foster care, divorces, abuse, poverty, and even all-out neglect. There are trends that I see in my own family tree that I absolutely do not want to plague my life, and especially not my children's lives. So just based on that, you can imagine each generation slowly trying to make improvements over the prior one. I've long believed I have the power to break that pattern. I've always been the weird one, The one that disagreed with things, that never fit in, that couldn't get along with family members because I disagreed with their behavior. Maybe you're nodding your head right now because maybe that's you too. Our kids are the ones who are going to take that slow incline and make a jump upward and skyrocket toward a future that prior generations could have never imagined. Maybe you have a not-so-pretty family history too. If so, it's likely that you've thought extensively about your desire to change that for your children, just like I have. On Facebook yesterday, I shared that I've long had a gift of being able to see potential. Whether it's in a person, things, or ideas, I'm able to see so clearly what could be. This is a wonderful gift. And it's primarily why I'm able to empower and encourage my friends and clients so much because when I say I believe in someone, I am dead serious. But that gift is also a detriment to my emotions at times because when something doesn't live up to that potential, I'm left with disappointment or even depression at what could have been. I've actually felt loss as if someone died because something didn't come to fruition. This is where the concept of conscious parenting has really begun to interest me. Because I'm so passionate about providing a better life for my children, my clients, my friends. And that's a beautiful thing, right? But I've learned this lesson a million times throughout my life, and I think I'll have to learn it a million times more. You can't want more for someone else than they want for themselves. Let me say that again. You can't want more for someone else than they want for themselves. All my effort at this point is because I want for my children's future. 
I want them to have joy, love, ambition, education, confidence, and to live a fulfilled life. But when I'm wanting, dreaming, planning, strategizing, all of that, I'm not in the present moment. My brain is in the future thinking about what could be. I'm subconsciously or consciously creating expectations. I like those expectations. I think they're wonderful. And no, I don't have specific dreams for my kids like their exact profession, number of kids, or where they'll go to college, or if they'll even go to college. So when I say planning for their future, it's not like that. My plans and dreams are for their experience, their mental, emotional, and physical health. I want them to have an open mind, the ability to holistically consider themselves and others, and be creative enough to thrive in whatever the future world looks like. So when I'm in my head creating those expectations, I'm inadvertently setting myself up for disappointment again. And what's worse, I'm very likely going to accidentally project these expectations onto my children. That's what we do, right? We can't help it. That's what our parents did. How many of us now as adults are doing all this self-work, therapy and personal growth and everything else to unravel the tangled ball of string our parents accidentally left in our soul? So... I've become aware of how important it is not to just provide the opportunity for them to grow and in hopes that they can reach their full potential, but also to give them space to become who they are supposed to be. I don't want my kid in therapy for years just trying to unravel what I did. Maybe that's inevitable. I don't know. None of us know. We're all just doing our best, right? So this lady, Dr. Shafali, she's been on Oprah and featured on several other big media outlets. She teaches conscious parenting. I like it. And I'm really interested in her ideas, though, because it's not a set of rules for us. It's all about engaging and connecting with our children to help them develop emotional intellect It's about eye contact, free play, and being present in the moment with our children. She talks about how the brain thrives on empathy and connection rather than punitive methods, which is so thrilling to me. I'm diving into her books. Okay, she has a few. I'm going to read The Awakened Family first. And then her other really popular one is called The Conscious Parent. And her name is spelled S-H-E-F-A-L-I, Dr. Shafali. It's less about how to discipline your kids and more about how we as parents react, how we interact with others, our language, our mannerisms, and how all of those things will be reflected in our children's lives. If we're confident, calm, and have strong boundaries with others, Our children's lives will eventually reflect that too. This is exactly why I coach women with money. I have seen firsthand the connection between finances and confidence, boundaries, and emotional wellness. So this is just another application of the same principles. If we as mothers get our own personal behavior, emotions, and reactions dealt with, Everything else falls into place, whether that be money, parenting, relationships, health. I truly believe it's all connected. I've shared before that one thing affects another. You get your finances in check and suddenly you have the courage to um, eat healthier. Or you get your relationship to a healthier level and suddenly you have the energy to clean out the garage. Why? Because we are emotional beings and because every action that we witness affects our feelings and then we behave as a reflection of those emotions. I'm all about being more conscious and present with my kids. I use the word intention often. Just as I intend to create a brighter future monetarily for our family, 
and I take action to create the future that I want, I intend to nurture their curiosity, encourage them to build skills, and help them recognize solutions in a mindful way. This doesn't mean I won't set limits, have stern discussions, or that I'll allow unruly or hurtful behavior. I'm not raising wild, rule-breaking chimpanzees over here. But I do believe, just as with any relationship, we'll get farther, faster, by leading with love and empathy and self-regulation rather than with fear-based techniques and harsh conditions. There again, I can bring it back to other things I talk about all the time, mindset and behavior. If we deal with our own personal junk and get some of that resolved, it won't show up elsewhere. Most of my clients do have personal baggage going on subconsciously, which creates habits in their lives, and that baggage shows up in the way that they manage money. Whether people can't seem to build savings, whether they can't quit overspending, or whether they have tried everything and just can't seem to make headway on their debt, it all leads back to the simplest thing. The conscious parenting stuff doesn't require you to do a course or even read the books. I'm going to because I love diving deep and really immersing myself in research. That's who I am. But don't get overwhelmed with the idea that you have to do so much or accomplish so much. The premise of everything I teach, practice, and share comes back to one simple thing. If you sit there and think, oh, I have to work on my money beliefs, my behavior, or my thoughts, whatever, you're going to be overwhelmed in an instant. What if you could just work on one at a time? One thought, one action, or one behavior that's happening right now. And deal with the next one as it comes up. The one thing that will change everything for you, the one thing that will alter your trajectory and probably your kids too, the one thing is noticing an action and identifying the thought behind it. You have to notice the single behavior, not something broad like screaming at the kids or impulse shopping, the one behavior like I'm putting this purple strappy clearance dress in my cart. Or, I'm reacting negatively to Barbie being left on the floor. It has to be specific. And this isn't about someone else either. This isn't she left Barbie on the floor. This is about you and me. Our actions as leaders in the home. I have to notice my action. I have to notice my action of tossing that dress in my cart and stop and identify the thought behind why I feel I need to buy it. I have to notice my reaction to the doll on the floor and identify the thought behind why that makes me upset. Whatever you're interested in working on, pare things down. Identify the action and the thought behind it one at a time. Practice and development of this single skill will change everything. Your money, your parenting, your relationship, your work, your health, you name it. Why? Because by doing this, we're being conscious and present. All right, Mama. Thank you again for being here with me today. I truly believe we can have it all through intention consistency, and always trying to be present in the moment. This week, edge a little closer to reaching abundance by recognizing when your mind is in the future, planning or creating expectations. Notice what you're thinking about and why. Take note of it and then intentionally shift your thoughts to the current moment. Through this exercise, you're going to practice this over and over again, I'm telling you. You'll find more joy, less anxiety, and greater connection in the things and people who are important to you, which I think is something worth fighting for. Rest assured, I will be doing this right along with you. That's why I wanted to share all of this amazing information about conscious parenting this week. 
But before you go, I want to invite you to help me reach and help change Mama's lives. On November 22nd, 2019, I will be doing a drawing for a $50 Amazon gift card. All you have to do to have your name entered in that drawing is to click the link in your iTunes app and provide a rating and review for this podcast. Getting ratings and reviews helps me climb the charts in iTunes. The higher the show is ranked, the more likely mamas will find it, and the more beautiful lives can be positively impacted. So, help me reach my goal of 50 reviews in 50 days, and you might just win 50 bucks. Don't forget to check out the show notes at reachingabundance.com where you'll find the summary of everything we talked about here. Help me get the word out about this new podcast by posting on Instagram or Facebook and tagging me at Happy Healthy Abundance so all your mom friends can dive in and have a listen too. I look forward to talking with you again next time.